So we've had a few people wondering what's going on with our observation hive. It's up for renovation at the minute. And lucky for you, John's timed it well, so you get to watch me renovate it. So I've decided to make the entrance up high because the entrance is actually in the dog's yard and there's a conflict of interest between dogs and bees. So <laughs> anyway, I figure if the girls are up high and the dogs are down low, they won't have to bother each other. So hopefully I'm gonna get myself a bit of clear tube that's gonna run from here through my hole that I've already drilled before the lad got here. And then we'll have an entrance up the top. I'm gonna to make a landing port. Obviously put our glasses back together and then we've got, a, got our hive that we'll bring back and pop them back in here again and see what happens next. So I've been deliberating, is that the word when you think, when you think out loud, deliberating? <laughs> About, you know, like making a smaller entry so the girls can look after themselves. And there's a whole lot of literature about bees being able to protect their entrance. And so yeah, that's why you have the little tiny entrance on a bee box. But I don't know, after today's excitement with we had a blooming big nest of bees sitting out, basically on the ground, and they had no protection from nowhere and they were doing all right. So I'm kind of don't know. I'm thinking I'm just going to make a landing board and I'm just going to screw that to the wall, something like that, and stick the, that bit of hose obviously in there and just let them figure their own shit out. I don't know. Because I was going to make a slat and a box and a whole fancy ass blooming landing area. But I'm thinking, nah. So we're just going to screw that together and we'll put that outside of the shed. I've got myself a bit of extra wood so I can keep it all balanced. Go. Cool. So that'll be their little landing board and that'll be their new entrance to their new home. It's like their own little bloody, what's that, what are those things in a boat? Porthole? It's their own little porthole. Hello, let me in, let me in, little pig. Not to bite a hair of your chinny chin chin. Anyway, we'll just whiz outside the door here and see how far my screws have gone through my shed. I don't know whether I'm supposed to have a little thing there, I don't know. I think that'll be all right, that'll be, that'll be a good experiment anyway. Follow me. <laughs> hey kids, come here, come here. Hey Annie. Now these are the girls that we're trying to protect. And lightning the big man. <laughs> I think we already know that bees and dogs don't mix. They don't like each other. Oh. No, they do. And they're both very important to me because I love both of them. So I'd like them to coexist. Hell. I might have to actually take that screw out. If you're patient, you can just wait there and I'll be back. Now I'm going to stick the hose through. Like that. Yes? Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm, crap, that looks a bit awkward, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, no, no, this ladder's is a bit dodgy. Oh. This is also we can keep you safe, you guys. Got a monkey bar. <laughs> oh, damn to hell. No different size ends. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm just looking for a driver for a different size bloody deck screw. This will work. God. All right, we'll try that again. Oh, under the pepper tree here. God, it stinks, doesn't it? Right, 
Okay, now what we've got to do is trim our hose to the right length so we can fit in like a glove. A snug fit. <laughs> This is where the father-in-law is in here. I don't think I used my spirit level on that. Do you think the girls would be fussed? It was not quite level when they come in for a land and they go, holy shit, this must be a bush bee van construction. We're not quite right. <laughs> All we need to do now is get our hose the right length because if we have it too long, it'll get a kink. If we get it just right, we should be somewhere around about there, I reckon. Now all I've got to do is see if I can cut it in a straight line. Hell, I hope we can get it back in that hole. That'll suck otherwise, won't it? Right, so, anyway, I reckon we'll just cut it through there. If we fuck this up, we'll have to go and get some more pipe. Goodness me. Right. Stick that back together. Hmm. And we'll put the glass in and we should be all good. Do, do, do. If I can stand up there without breaking anything. Oh. Hopefully I've got it sort of straight. That'd be too much to expect to win. Oh, there we go. You got the slip in. I wonder if we should have bought a bend. No, nope, that's going to work, isn't it? As if all else fails, we'll get a bend, but still. <laughs> At this point in time, I think that's working pretty good. My other idea is I've got a permanent hole here now for my feeder bottle to go in, because I had it through the mesh, but the girls found it pretty hard to get to, so I thought, well, if I put a permanent bottle there, it should be fine. But, pff, if not, as you do, you'll see version number three. Oh, and the last little bit of excitement before we lose the light for the evening, is we'll screw our glass on the other side and then we'll be all ready for the girls in the morning. little ladies in. These are the ones we're going to take back to the observation hive. Oh! <laughs> we'll leave it one little gap and then they can hop in. Oh, aren't they cute? Look at that. Let me in, let me in. <laughs> Interesting when you come to a beehive and you think, oh, there's not much going on. And then as soon as you shut the door, it's amazing how much traffic's coming and going. So I kind of think one day when we get really bored, we might sit down and count how many bees come and go in a minute, and then we could do a mathematical calculation of the of the actual amount of travel, the comings and goings, without even stoplights. How cool is that? This is the sort of shit my dad did when he was carting a bee box without his suit on and tripped over and got stung to bits. <laughs> Let's not do that. <laughs> This poor bloody hive tool was used as a bit of an axe. And I put all chips in the jolly... Well, I don't know if you can see, but there's some little... Get out, Mr. Smoke. There's some little chips in the, in the blade. Things not to do with your hive tool. So your hive tool isn't an axe, so don't treat it like an axe. Anyway, I'm just here trying to rectify the trouble that I'm in. I don't think I'll get those chips out, but at least when I run my finger along there, it won't have all the lumps. So I've just sort of got me little stone here while I was still waiting for the cameraman to get organised. I thought I'd get away with doing this while no one was looking, but if I got a little bit more excited and got that super sharp, I wouldn't have to carry my pocket knife. I could just cut the string with that bit. But that might be a bit outrageous. Anyway, let's get our, what are we doing? Get our observation hive put together again. Let that settle them for a second. They're all running around in there going, call the fire brigade, help, help. I don't know, would they have a fire bell? <laughs> That'd be so funny. It was like the gun of the guard bees on the ding a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just 
just being silly. Put them up the top here. So we'll just try not to push them through too far because last time we got a bit carried away and they got a bit stuck to the glass. So it's a matter of getting it all right. And just pop them there. There's some really nice brood there. She's been a busy lady, boss lady. Look at that. Hopefully we can get some good shottage. Shottage. <laughs> what sort of word is a shottage? I'm sure there's not. That is great terminology, isn't it? Confuse them just a little bit, I think. <laughs> They're resourceful, as we saw yesterday with that jolly hive in the bushes. So we'll just pop these last few frames in. Well, this last one, and then I think I'll sweep the bees in the box. Well, the other idea, I suppose we could put it outside and they could, but then they won't know where the hell they are. No, I think we'll sweep them into there and then we'll put the last two frames in and we'll shut the door and see what happens. Won't we, chicks? These girls have got no idea how famous they're going to be, have they? You're going to go all around the world. So I'm thinking with the last one, we'll sit this frame down here. I'm just going to lay the frame there, and then I'm going to sweep the extra girls into the into here, and then hopefully they'll all figure themselves out and find a new home. Right, put that one in there. That's looking pretty good. Hopefully they can figure out how to get in and out now. Oh, just as a footnote, as I was, I don't know, did I mention the fact that I've changed my feeder hole? So I can actually, actually got a bloomin' all the way through. But I kept my bit that I cut out so I can make a cork. So if you're, you know, if you're making a feeder, don't throw your cork away. You don't even have to find the one that's the right size, it's already there. Anyway, we'll do, we'll put the feeder bottle up there in a minute. I'll just go and find myself a screw and a, Drive a reggae machine. And that should be that. Well, I don't know, do we re do, I will show you the sugar feeder thing and we'll see whether they have a suck on that. So I've just got some sugar water in a normal old soda pop bottle. I've drilled two little holes in the top. And I found if you, if you tip it up with all that air in there, of course it's gonna run its ass off until it gets a vacuum. So if you squeeze the air out before you tip it over, and then you pull our plug out, pop it in there. And then hopefully the ladies will smell that sugar and as they are nibbling nibbling on the sugar it'll release a little bit of an air bubble and enough it'll go but hell i don't know we'll find out when we come back in a day or two whether they've actually found it or not it might be a stupid idea but i think that's how it should work and that's how it works with other women when you have a little what's that called so the air can't get in it's called something but anyway doesn't matter keep the cork so now we're gonna show you some really cool footage that we've taken with our micro lens. We've got the queen laying eggs. We've got her getting groomed when she's laying her eggs. We've got some drone comb and we've got some jolly bees making some nectar. If you're enjoying this footage, just say thank you to our Patreon supporters that have made it possible to buy this macro lens because it's bloody amazing. They can see shit that I can't even see with my own eyes. Mind you, my eyes are pretty ordinary at the best of times, but it's incredible, this technology. So thank you very much for all you supporters, and if you're not supporting, maybe consider it.